ਪੀ ਸੀ ਐਚ ਐਸ ਮੀਡੀਆ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਪੀ ਸੀ ਐਚ ਐਸ ਮੀਡੀਆ ਟੁਡੇ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਸਟਾਰਟਿੰਗ ਅ ਨਿਊ ਸ਼ੋ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਕਾਲਡ ਇੰਟਰਜਨ ਐਂਡ ਥਿਸ ਸ਼ੋ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਫੋਕਸਿੰਗ ਔਨ ਯੂਥ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਆਸਕਿੰਗ ਯੂ ਟੂ ਗਿਵ ਅਸ ਅ ਕਾਲ ਆਫਟਰ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਇੰਟਰਵਿਊਡ ਆਰ ਗੈਸਟ ਸੋ ਆਮ ਗੋਇੰਗ ਟੂ ਆਸਕ ਯੂ ਟੂ ਲਿਸਨ ਇਨ ਐਂਡ ਟੂਨ ਇਨ ਵਿਦ ਯੋਰ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਵਿਦ ਯੋਰ ਫਰੈਂਡਸ and spread the message about this program called Intergen. Intergen, a safe space for the youth of yesterday, today and tomorrow to hear and to be heard. We want you to be involved. We want you to call us so we can answer your questions and we can hear from you your concerns and get you involved in your issues. So in the studio with me today I have a guest who will be talking about the youth and some of the issues that she gets to hear. So without further delay I would like to introduce you to Akanksha Sharma. Akanksha Sharma is currently working as a case manager for Better Families program at PCHS Services. She holds a master's in forensic science and criminal psychology from Punjab University India and postgraduate diploma in youth development from Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Youth Development India she has over 5 years of rich and varied experience working with organizations and people engaged in the fields of youth and social development training community development peace building gender and violence education public policy governance and management so i would like you to meet my guest today and we will be talking about some of the cases that she gets and some of the work that she does in pchs me uh, community services kanksha thank welcome. you so much reena for inviting me over to this first episode of intergen i am really obliged to share this platform with you and talk about the issues that youth face and uh, have more information. Yeah. Thank you Akanksha for being here. So I like to ask you a little bit about the uh, program that you run um and uh, as I understand it's called Better Families program. So can you tell me a little bit about um what's the criteria for families to be accessing this program and what it's about oh uh, kirina so uh, right now i'm working as a case manager with better families program mm-hmm. better families uh, as its name suggests it focuses to strengthen the family that's our vision of the program and if we look into any family setting it considers mostly kids and parents Right. so that's uh, what a nuclear family looks like uh, mostly in canada and so in this program our eligibility criteria for youth to avail our services is they have to be between age of 12 and 24 okay. and uh, for parents if their kids are below 12 years of age they can uh, seek our services in that cap- we can provide them parenting counseling on one on one basis in addition to that we also provide parenting courses to court mandated client if there's any kind of uh, issue that have been going in home and it have been reported under certain circumstances into a legal thing so they have legal obligation to undertake few sessions on parenting their kids in a better way and uh, just not uh, our program is not just limited to one on one counseling we also provide group sessions Mm-hmm. So right now we have uh, our virtual youth group youth drop in program that we used to have it on our campus at 50 Sunny Meadow but now it's on a Zoom call and in addition to that we also have our parenting monthly group that uh, can be accessed through our Facebook page live on first Thursday of every month okay. from 6 p.m. onwards okay so uh you mentioned uh the that the age groups are uh, anywhere between um 12 13 to 24 yes. correct and then uh, any children who are under the age of 12 then parents can access yes. they can call you yes so what what kind of um uh concerns do you hear 
from uh, children under the age of 12, from parents? Uh, so if we get a call from parents who are seeking counseling for their kids who are below 12 years of age, mm -hmm. their most important concern is about discipline. Okay. Because parents also understand that after immigration to Canada, there are certain rules and procedures and policies that they need to follow in their household uh, regarding disciplining their child. Right. So that's their struggle, that okay. how should they discipline their child without using any kind of physical violence. So discipline is something I think we need to talk about in terms of what 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 is discipline, right? So experiences of, like for example, for me, when I hear the word discipline, it means different things, right? Yes. Because I grew up in a different, yeah, different time with my parents and it means completely different things. What does discipline mean in Canadian context? Uh, Serena, if we talk about discipline in Canadian context or uh, according to Western psychology, it is mostly teaching and guiding your kids, giving them an opportunity to take responsibilities of the actions that they commit. Mm -hmm. So instead of just uh, telling, giving them punishments or right. uh, in terms of corporal punishments, it should be avoided. Whereas different different techniques should be included in their parenting style, which could avoid certain situations that neither parents nor kids want to face. Right, and we can say that if we t if we talk about the difference between punishment and discipline, um, punishment is is punishing a behavior, right? Whereas discipline is correcting a behavior, yes. right? So there is a difference, as as you mentioned. So in terms of, can you give us some examples of uh, discipline um, that parents may ask about, like for younger kids, that they need to discipline their child or their child uh, isn't uh, doing certain things? So wh what is it that you hear about? Okay, Serena, so I'll just pick uh, from the conversation you just started that uh, regarding there's a huge uh, difference between punishment and discipline. Mm -hmm. And so in addition to that, I would like to say that if you want to make a child uh, into adapting to a different behavior, you should not be worried about changing the behavior. You should be worried about changing the situation that is prevalent in a, in a household. Mm -hmm. So for example, if I don't want my three-year kid to go near the electrical wires or electrical plug, why don't I change the situation? Why don't I make his or her playroom which, is, which does not have any electrical socket? because they have a curiosity to try something different. Right. And uh, if we think about the science, how it works, the brain is under construction until we reach our teen age. Mm -hmm. So still uh, the lobe that is focused on problem solving, decision making, that is not particularly developed in kids. So that's why they have some issues understanding in a way that a parent expect them to understand that particular situation. Right. And you mentioned uh, for younger kids, like say if they're really young um, and you can either make a room where there are no electric sockets or you can make a room child proof. Like for example, you can purchase things from yes. stores if we're talking about really yes, young kids, yes. right? And or make sure that you buy certain things like, mm -hmm. um, you know, for doors, uh, there are safety things that yes, you can yes, buy definitely. or for sharp edges, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's child proofing, right? So l let's move a little bit about uh, towards like we're talking about discipline and punishment, mm -hmm. right? Um, what about the parents' role themselves, right? We're talking about youth, their issues, but the parents also have a role in terms of um, their own checklist, like when we're disciplining or when we are telling our child to do something, right? Mm -hmm. What, what, what should parents be aware of themselves? Okay, so that's a, a really important question, Rina, you just put forward because that's the thing that uh, most of our parents does not consider right. before uh, making a call for a counseling session. So because their objective is to seek service for their kids, right. not to seek service as an entire family unit mm -hmm. uh, with the objective to strengthen their relationship with each other. Right. So for parents first, most of the important thing would be 
your behavior, your own behavior. Like we always have a role model. Right. It could be, and mostly kids would have a role model out of their family because they never see that behavior that they want them to be look forward to adapting that behavior as a parent in their future roles. Mm -hmm. So what, if you ask your child, okay, uh, I remember that's, uh, that's a very common example that we used to take in India that uh, when a child is young, very small, and if there's somebody on the door and asking for your dad or mom and they would be like, no, just tell them that they're not at home. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we tell them, okay, tell a lie for us. But then when they tell a lie on anything, you know, why you why didn't have your lunch? They would be like, no, I was not feeling hungry. Whereas they took money and purchased something from their school canteen. Right. And then when, because parents got to know about things, they, they are more smarter than their kids. They know they have also gone through the same phase. Then we'd be like, why would you lie? Because, you know, you also lied. You also asked us to lie one time. So what if we do, does this thing for our own benefit this time? Mm -hmm. So that's the most common thing that you need to understand, that uh, they will be replicating your behavior. Right. How you're talking, how you're behaving. Uh, we would see so many kids, you know, uh, pretending to a uh, cat walk like their mom walk or put, try putting on some makeup like their mom does. So, you know, they try to imitate the behavior that they see all 24 hours in home. And you're absolutely right because I remember I used to, when I was small, I used to put a sari on like my mom would, mm -hmm. right? And we would play home, home, like kar kar, right? <laughs> yeah, that's so the thing. <laughs> we used to play those things and, and that was because we saw our mom and dad doing things that they were doing, right? Yeah. So it, it is very, you, you pointed out a very important thing that we role model for our children the behavior that we want them to see. Mm -hmm. And yes. that too is then a, another thing for parents to remember that whatever you are doing, that is what your children are, yes, are copying. Mm -hmm. So that's for younger kids. And then as they get older, mm -hmm. right? Now let's move to a little bit of uh, an older age. Yes. They're, they're, they're um, copying their parents' behavior. Yes. Now, what kind of challenges can we expect um, or do you hear about for the older children who are, let's say, between the ages of um, 13, 14, 15, uh, getting into high school? Uh, for them, I think the most important thing because of the COVID I'm listening so much is setting up a routine. Right. Because it's been almost four months that kids are not going to school. They do not have any particular routine. Even the classes have been shifted to an online module, mm -hmm. but they were not that effective, I would say. It right. was kind of a headache for parents as well as a headache for kids that I've heard from most of my parents uh, that I work with and their kids that it's an additional responsibility mm -hmm. because uh, in, if we see in most of the household, both the parents are working. Right. So their work have also shifted to an online platform, to an online module, whereas a mother is working from nine to five as her hard job. And uh, same time after that, she's putting, she have to put extra time for the homework and the assignment that her kids have. Right. So that's, go that's an additional burden on parents, a 24 hours job. And because of this, if we talk about the students who have recently passed high school, you know, they were so excited about the graduation. They have been waiting through all their school life. Okay, we'll be having a prom night. We'll be participating in an after school party. And all those things, you know, kind of ruined. Mm -hmm. And it's not because of the fact that they did something because of that it was ruined. It's just they don't have any control over right. the situation. And so would you say that uh, during COVID-19 and during this change of online learning, mm -hmm. there is more stress in the family and more stress on the kids? Because oftentimes parents uh, um, think that they have stress because mm -hmm. they have to now do um, perform their duties. They have to work. They have to um, still cook, still clean. Mm -hmm. Their stress level is higher. What about the kids' stress level? What, can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, Srina. So I think uh, the first thing that we discussed about the uncertainty of future. So mm -hmm. now they're not sure that even though they'll have a good degree, uh, they'll have their graduation done, what kind of jobs they would have in the labor market to right. earn, uh, uh, to have a good income. Because now we are 
uh, hearing every day so much people get laid off from the jobs who are well qualified, who have everything, uh, qualification and experience. So if we look forward having a new people stepping into a job market in next two or three years, what kind of future they are looking to have? Okay. So that's a stress for most of the high school student and for other kids who are in grade seven, eight. So there is, you know, they try to have that connection with nature. Mm -hmm. They used to, That's the summer that most of the Canadian wait for, to have this four or five months of uh, good weather where they can go outside, enjoy, have plenty of time sitting outdoor, spending outdoor. Okay. So now they have a restriction. They cannot go to their friend's house. Mm -hmm. They cannot go to their cousin's house. They are, you know, kind of packed in their four walls of the home. Right. So, uh, Akanksha, I'm just going to sort of sum up for our viewers before we go for a break. So, we talked a little bit about the challenges that uh, our young people face, uh, young kids face, and uh, also a little bit about what's parents' responsibility in terms of when we are talking about disciplining children and what's the difference. So, we're going to continue our conversation right after this break. When it comes to quality repair for your vehicle, look no further than Harad Auto Services. Our skilled professionals are dedicated to making your maintenance or repair efficient and affordable. We specialize in foreign and domestic brands. Let our experienced technicians help you with all aspects of services for your vehicle. We can diagnose and repair engine, suspension, transmission, brakes, and more. We're conveniently located near the 407 and Steels. Call or schedule an appointment today. If you have been injured in a car accident or had your long-term disability claim denied, we can help. Contact UL Lawyers at 519-891-8888. We offer free case evaluation with no upfront fees. You pay only if we win. So if you've been injured or had your disability claim denied, call 519-891-8888 or visit ullaw.ca today and let us advocate for you. UL Lawyers for Injury and Disability. Call 519 519- Welcome back to PCHS Media, the youth show Intrigen. We're talking to Akanksha Sharma about the challenges that our young people face and sometimes their parents may have. So we're gonna continue our conversation with Akanksha. So Akanksha, we talked about the discipline, we talked about the challenges. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me a little bit about um, when we're asking for help, for example, mm -hmm. as a parent, right? Yes. When do parents ask for help? Okay, so uh, mostly parents ask for help when their kid have kind of, you know, secluded them from their uh, his or her social life. Okay. So that's the alarming challenge for them when mm -hmm. the kid no longer want their parents to interfere in their personal space. Right. And their concern is looked as an interference. Mm -hmm. So that's when they see, okay, things are not going the way that we want. So that is the, then we should seek for help. Most of the time this thing happened, okay. but sometimes some uh, parents are so much concerned about everything. So if they ha have any check mark, you know, any kind of red flag that they see in the behavior of their child, mm -hmm. they make no time to contact any services that would support their kid in that circumstance. Right. What would you say is the best time for parents to, you, you alluded a little bit to mm -hmm. it, right? That mm -hmm. some parents uh, who are concerned call uh, early, but when would you suggest is the best time to seek help? So because if we talk about any issues, they are not, you know, age specific that, okay, mm -hmm. this is the age now my kid is going to have that kind of issue. Like if we talk about uh, puberty, it's not going to hit at a certain age, right. but it, comes with any circumstances, any additional stress that they are having in home, their personal relationship with friends. So I would suggest whenever a kid come to you and say, I'm not feeling okay, I'm mm -hmm. feeling low, but I don't know the reason why I'm feeling low. Right. You know, that's the most common thing that they express. These are the words that they use to express that uh, feeling, mm -hmm. that they're not sure from where this feeling is coming from. Uh, Akanksha, would you say that uh, there could be a time if, let's say, the youth doesn't feel like asking that question from their parents? Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things that we want to encourage youth to do is yes. seek help yes, themselves. Definitely. 
Mm -hmm. Could they call you mm -hmm. and ask you for help? Yes, definitely. I would say that uh, we at Punjabi Community Health Services, we have a, a stringent procedure for pro privacy and confidentiality. So you should never be afraid about anything that you discuss with the case manager in any program, not just in Better Families program, that it would be completely private, it would be confidential, and nothing mm -hmm. would be shared with anybody, even your parents, without your consent. Right. And the reason why I'm asking this question is, um, in, in, in my experience, it is better if kids ask somebody who can give them suggestions, who can help and support them, who is a safe adult, mm -hmm. as opposed to asking friends, as opposed to asking, you know, random people or putting it out on, you know, social media about mm -hmm. their concerns, right? So I consider like places like PCHS mm -hmm. a safe space, a safe place for yeah. students, for kids to reach out mm -hmm. and ask questions. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, as you mentioned, they can um, ask confidential questions and seek help for themselves. Yes. Yeah. Could they suggest to their parents to reach out to you for help and support as well? Yes, definitely. You know, uh, they can... Uh tell uh, give us their website okay so parents can also look on our website look through the program we also have so many video resources that is available on our website so parents can you develop that credibility mm -hmm. before coming to us and talking about their kids and because of the COVID situation everything is now on virtual platform on phone so you don't have actually to visit our office personally you can just contact us mm -hmm. and uh, without disclosing your name you can just ask anything that uh, right. we would be helped to serve you in that capacity. Okay, mm -hmm. and and just as you mentioned, without disclosing your name, um, we are also hoping that you would connect with us and that you would uh, give us a call. And we want to make sure the same thing as uh, you mentioned, Akanksha, that you do not have to disclose your name. Um, or any identifying information when you're asking a question because we really want you to be open. We want you to feel safe and we want the parents to feel safe as well when you ask your question. So as this program uh, goes on in, in the next weeks and months, uh, we would like to hear from you, the youth as well, so that, um, you know, when we have experts and when we have a guest, they can ask you a yeah, question. Sure right here and from the expert and get some uh, answers or mm -hmm. at least uh, connect with you, right? Yes, definitely. You know, sometimes it's not just about that they might need services at this point. It's just that it's good to have uh, some extra resources in your pocket. Mm -hmm. When yeah. you are ready to move out of your home, maybe then uh, you would need something not for just yourself, but for your peers who you understand they are in a situation which is a risk situation. Right. Yes. Uh, Kanksha, you talked about the youth virtual uh, group sessions that, and that's yes. taking place currently. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that in terms of who can get involved and when? Is there a timing? Uh, and how do youth find out about the program? Okay, so for our youth drop-in program, it happens every Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m. at Zoom platform. And in order to register for that, you can uh, contact us at the numbers that are b uh, mentioned below. And anybody who is between the age of 12 to 24 can register for the program. In this youth group, we try to have a healthy discussion about various issues that the youth faces them. Uh, maybe you know cyberbullying that's the most mm -hmm. common thing and uh, we last week we discussed about the different forms of bullying and cyberbullying this week we are going to talk about uh, uh, self-care various form of self-care for youth somebody would like to do exercise as a mean of self-care but how mm -hmm. uh, considering the physical mobility issues physical limitations how we are going to make sure that we are still making that time and effort to spend towards our self-care thing. So it's a, a discussion, it's games. We also play virtual games. We have a movie night virtually. So we have Netflix on, share a screen, watch some shows, watch some uh, movies, and we have fun. It's, a, it's like you mentioned, it's a safe space, you know, right, to yeah. interact, learn, and play. 
And that sounds like fun when yes. you're watching Netflix, <laughs> right? That sounds yes. so cool. So um, there you have it for youth as well. So if you are kind of looking for a place um, where you can connect safely or parents are looking for their kids to be involved safely um, in, in a, another environment, right? We all need that, yes. um, another place to connect right? Yes. And that's how I kind of consider this place as being a safe place. Yes. Can you share some of the examples that youth may have reached out to you mm -hmm. um, and asking you for help or support or for your ideas and suggestions? Uh, for youth, their main concern is uh, having that communication gap with their parents. So they want me to act as a mediator or a facilitator to smooth that process for them. Uh, sometimes for parents, it's very hard to understand the perspective, like this show is intergen, you know, considering different generation of mm -hmm. youth uh, bridging that gap yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Right. So that's the same thing, like we were in grade 12 once, our parents were in grade 12 once. So we need to talk about the changes that have happened through all those years, through these decades. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very hard for kids to talk to their parents straightforward because their answer would be either yes or no without right. any reason. But kids today, they want reason. I remember that uh, mm -hmm. whenever in childhood, I used to ask uh, some questions to my mom, okay, like why are you following this tradition? Mostly mm -hmm. about tradition and customs. Okay, why we can't uh, broom the house at night? Mm -hmm. Why should we do it in the morning only? Right. Whereas uh, she would be like, that's why these kids, today's kids, they always have curiosity, they always ask questions if we were we were so sincere, we never asked our parents right. any question. Yeah. That's why they used to have four or five kids. And now because you kids, <laughs> you you are so curious, you ask so many questions. That's why, you know, the family size is decreasing. Right. And, and parents are feeling more stress. Yes. Right. They're feeling like it is so, so much work to raise mm -hmm. children. Um, now, it, it to an extent, it's true because, you know, here, the environment has changed, yes, right? Definitely. We're in a different country. And as you uh, mentioned earlier, kids are in four walls. Mm -hmm. And uh, since COVID, that really hasn't helped, yes. right? And parents have had to take on a lot of the teacher's mm -hmm. role. Yes. Although there is a saying that uh, parents are their children's first, first. teachers, right? Yes. Uh, but at the same time, they're not their academic teachers, yes. right? So that uh, stress level increases in the home. Mm -hmm. So there is um, more for parents to do. So mm -hmm. they need to learn mm -hmm. skills, isn't it? Yes, definitely. It's, it's not about just in the role of a parent, but you know, if we talk about uh, interpersonal relationship with each other as a husband and wife, mm -hmm. so uh, mostly people nowadays, if they're having any trouble, instead of looking for advice from friends, families, Facebook, or just logging on to a Google, they prefer going to a certified counselor for help right. because uh, now they are able to make that decision for their own. They value that relationship and they want to put an effort to learn how to rectify those mistakes that have been happened in the past. So the same thing happens with parenting, you know? Right. If uh, you are willing to give it a try, you have made the decision, okay, you have a child now, how are we going to make the best use of the situation? Right, yeah. For the kid and for our own self. It's not, it's both ways, you know, they also don't want to overstress kid. They also don't want to overstress their own self. Right, and I think the other piece that we have to remember is that now most of the parents, um, both mom and dad are yes. working parents. Yes. Right. Yeah. So there is a, a stress uh, from work mm -hmm. and then, you know, you have a child who is sitting at home and waiting for you to do <laughs> something, do the activities. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's additional stress. Yes. But it can be managed if we as parents reach out for help yes. and we learn new strategies. I came here as a teenager and I became a mother here. And I really, you know, as you said earlier too, uh, wanted to change my parenting style. And uh, PCHS used to be PCHC, and this was my home, right? So I used to, I don't think there were any parenting sessions that I would miss. And I still reach out for help because as kids grow older, their issues change, change. right? Yeah. So we talked about making the child safe 
room area, yes. right? And then now our kids are learning in an environment where there is, um, you know, media all around them. Mm -hmm. So these are new challenges mm -hmm. that we are facing as parents mm -hmm. and our kids are having to learn about. Yes. And what would you say about that? Uh, so I think it's uh, very much important to have that kind of conversation with your kid mm -hmm. because as until unless the kid is below 12, you know, you are kind of the sole owner what, of whatever they do, whatever choices they make. You have the right. entire control. But as they step into uh, new classes, new grades, so they have a different kind of circle. Their friends become their family, as we say, mm -hmm. you know, and that trend goes on until they reach uh, their college and step out of their home how to right. stay with their new family, with their friends. So it's always recommended to have a good conversation with your kids about the things that they like or that they don't like. Mm -hmm. Instead of just forcing your opinion or them, it could be uh, a small thing like, you know, choosing their own dish while ordering in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, if you we are going together in a restaurant as a family, uh, the parents would make that decision for their kids sometimes, you know. Right. Okay, this is the thing we are ordering. This is the platter. Okay, so you can have this portion. You can have this portion. But right. let's give them this opportunity to make the decision for their own self. Mm -hmm. And even though they didn't order a good thing, but then they will realize, okay, this was the wastage of money. Right. And the next thing they will have that thing in mind that let's listen to my parent because mm -hmm. they have more experience. They might have tried that dish. They have might have been to this, the same restaurant. They have my, might have read the reviews of this particular thing. So that's why they are giving me an opinion from their number of years of experience. And oftentimes, I think what happens is that the parent knows, they calculate in their mind, right? <laughs> that if I pay for this and, and they don't eat and they don't finish, I, it's gonna be a waste, waste of money. Yes. So yeah. they kind of just make the decision themselves. Yeah. But you know, this you talked about a very important point in terms of allowing children to make decisions for yes. themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so there, there are a couple of things I, I would like you to touch upon as well. So decision making is one thing, mm -hmm. learning responsibility. Um, kids often, and, and I, I hear also mm -hmm. uh, uh, from parents, that kids will talk about their rights, but they don't talk about their responsibility. But we also have to teach them responsibility. Yes. What would you suggest, what ways um, can there be uh, mm -hmm. for kids to learn responsibility? Uh, so I would like to suggest, you know, start uh, giving res some few responsibility to the kids from an early age. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think, okay, my kid is grown up enough to, you know, help me uh, taking the things out of the laundry right. or, you know, uh, giving me the clothes and putting them into a, a laundry basket or mm -hmm. just at least maintaining their own closet or right maintaining their playroom, that kind of stuff, small, small stuff. So they need to be assured, okay, these are how the responsibility is look, going to look like. And for parents, I would like to suggest to give their kids more choices. So if you have two or more kids, so you can make a list of 10 household chores, okay? Mm -hmm. You're going to give them option, okay, so these are the 10 household chores. Pick your five chores, each individual, right. you right. know? So they would say, okay, so I have to pick five chores, I have 10 options. So then it's going to, even though they would not like everything that is being presented in the list, but they would you know, try to make an effort to incorporate that thing into their routine. And for the beginning, not uh, give them responsibility that is on everyday basis, but just try to keep it on a weekly basis. Okay, so this is your responsibility for this week. You're like, mm -hmm. for grown up boys mowing the lawn or for girls, you know, as a, helping uh, you or helping anybody in making the bed or so you they have a week time frame to right. ac com to accomplish that thing and then in a week you just check and 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 in terms of mowing the lawn sometimes mm -hmm. girls can be strong yes. and yes. mow the lawn as yes, well right, right. <laughs> uh snow uh taking the snow from the your driveway yeah you know? cleaning it's a driveway. teamwork it is a teamwork you're right yes yeah. and then you know uh, sometimes you could also acknowledge the what they're doing mm -hmm. that's the m most important thing i would say you know uh, sometimes uh, kids do so many things 
uh, consciously and consciously. Uh, but as a parent, we forgot to acknowledge that thing right. in the flow of day or, you know, how things are going. But it's very important to acknowledge those things. And then they feel, okay, they really take some time to appreciate what I did for them. And what you just mentioned is really important as well because, um, you know, in the school, you know, when mm. they're in their classrooms in, and they're doing something, they're hearing this. Yeah. They are taking responsibility. They are being taught mm -hmm. uh, to make decisions independently, mm -hmm. to take responsibility for their actions. Mm -hmm. And um, depending on how they're doing, they do get that acknowledgement. Yes. And I hear parents often say um, that teacher uh, chat right? Like they listen to their teacher right away and, and yet they're not listening to me. So and I think that's an important piece yes. <laughs> where as parents, we just we, we think that our kids have to do this. They should be doing this. Yes. And what we forget is we're in a different environment now, mm -hmm. right, with our children. It's not like us, like, yes. you know, or me, I'd say, <laughs> right, that we just knew we had to do these things. Yes. And, and uh, you know, where you got to ask questions and now the new generation is asking questions. So yes. it's a little bit more, more. than that. Progressive, you know, it's yeah. more progressive. They, because they're exposed to so many things, so they have queries. That's you know, automatic human response to anything. Mm -hmm. Even I, I immigrated to Canada two years ago, so I used to go to a grocery store. I would be so curious about seeing different things that are not uh, you no longer see in Indian grocery stores. Right. So, you know, you are curious. You would ask question. You look into the internet. So internet, you know, being a boon or bane, we talk about. So mm -hmm. that's how they have been using technology on their own disposal of time. Right. Yeah. So there are so many things that um, we can talk about. We can mm -hmm. talk about um, youth taking responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, what if, let's say, the child has not ever taken any of those responsibility mm -hmm. and parents are now willing to take help okay right yeah. what what's the how do they start if a child has never done something because it's going to create a challenge in the household Wh okay. where is the starting point i uh, guess because that uh, as you mentioned it is going to create more friction in the relationship i would say Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if there's any relationship and the communication is not clear, that's why the gap have been widened from so many years that there is no delegation of responsibilities mm -hmm. and duties where it was just, you know, pampering from one end or taking care of things from one end where the other uh, point was only at the receiving end, not right. the contributing in any way. So for in the beginning, it would be very important for family to get together as a team. Mm -hmm. Firstly, parents. You know, sometimes I mostly hear that husband will be going in right direction, wife in left direction. So, you know, they need to come together and start from ground zero to if they want this thing to actually work. Because mm -hmm. kids are so smart. They know, okay, this is the thing that they need to talk to their mom. And this is the thing they need to talk and get permission from their dad. Right. You're right. <laughs> so that's how I've seen, you know, that's how smart kids are. So they know how to take advantage of the situation. Even if the parents are, they recently had an argument, they know, okay, this is the best time to get our things demand because they are both are not in talking term. So I would say, okay, I've asked from the other parent, you just give me your credit card or just uh, allow me to go to a friend's place. And I think what you mentioned is is so important. And 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 the, the other person that they go to mm -hmm. uh, is grandma, or grandpa, right? Yeah. Yes. That the that when they know that okay, um, you know mom and dad are not going to listen mm -hmm. to them, and they go to grandma and grandpa. Sometimes that's that's another person, but that's person that they need. Yes. Um, and. Uh, for the responsibility, uh, I would say that uh, instead of giving all the responsibility at one person, it's better to divide it according to their age, mm -hmm. according to their capacity, according to their preference. You know, somebody could be so much uh, creative in decorating the room, whereas that person, you would be wasting that creativity if you're asking them to do the dishes. Right. You know, so you need to understand what their preferences are for your kids and then try to employ it in that way. So learning about your kids and yes. learning about their strengths yes. as well, right? That's yes. that's uh, what you're saying because, yeah, you're right. Like how how would you 
what would you tell your child other than the chores mm -hmm. that they need to do in the household? Mm -hmm. What would you say that the youth um, for themselves, for example, if um, they want to create something mm -hmm. and they have not had any communication with their parent, mm -hmm. how can they talk to their parent about um, doing something new or trying something new without, without assuming that the parent is automatically going to say no? Okay. So I think I always ask my clients or youth who uh, I deal with that if you're presenting any new idea to your parents, it's so much important to have the homework ready. So you need to show them examples, you know, could show them videos or this is how this thing would look like, you know, mm -hmm. there are a few examples that somebody have a room makeover uh, by arranging things in a different way, not the usual basic way. So that's how, you know, they can have a strong paperwork Right. to uh, support their argument that they will be presenting in front of their parents so that they are assured, okay, these are all the resources that I could collect in this time frame and I presented it. And now it's also responsibility of parents to give, even if they're denying that proposal, what are the relevant uh, reasons because of which they denied it. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, they, they've learned at the same time, if a child does that uh, research and they, they present their case, for example, they have done their due diligence and they've done their, uh, their homework. So um, I think these are really important points we discussed and we're going to take a small break and come back and hopefully we'll be able to take some of your questions and uh, hear your point of view and talk to you in person. Sing Farm. Jo family no khate ne pyar. Sing Farm to ki me kar sakde ne inkar. Fresh fruits, vegetables, the Indian grocery li saryan di pehli pasand. Sing Farm. Itho tusi taaze phalan da juice, ganne da juice har roz banwa ke le ja sakte ho. Ya kise vi samagam vich phal fruit di basket vi taiyar karwa sakte ho. Itho tusi phulla ate sabziyan di paneer vi le sakde ho. Do location to apniyan sevaavan pradan karde ne. 60 Cottrell Boulevard Brampton. 9054977887. Second location 4525 Abnezer Road Brampton 9056675 871 life insurance, critical insurance, disability insurance, super visa, visitor insurance, सारे group plan offer कर दिया ते दूसरी जो कोई अपनी investment वारे थोड़ी कोई सलाह लेनी होवे तुसी ते वो तुसी मेनु call कर सक दिया 416-871-4848 Thank you जी Welcome back to Intergen the Youth Show so we've been talking, uh, Kangsha and I, about a lot of the things that youth and parents face. And in this program, through a Kangsha program, um, there are different components of it. There are parents involved, there are youth involved, young kids involved. So we want to hear from you and we'd like to give you the number. So please give us a call at 647-981. 5892. We would like to hear from you and your questions and, um, and have Akanksha answer them for you. So uh, we are waiting for you to give us a call. So Akanksha, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about um, the whole uh, 13 to 24 age uh, group, okay. right? Um, what are different, uh, let's say, scenarios that you can present to us? Uh, are there different issues that you would say um, that are more prevalent, that you hear more often about, uh, or are more common that you would hear about? Uh, common, if I said mostly, it's uh, managing their emotions. 
Okay. For elder kids, I would say, you know, a teenager stepping into high school, it's uh, how they do not have any control over their emotions. So they understand it. Mm. So that's a good thing that they identify the issue, that this is the issue. But they need assistance, you know, they need help, somebody to hear what the actual issue is all about. Because they always hear from their parents that uh, you does not talk nicely with us, mm -hmm. you snap at us. Mm -hmm. But then what's the solution for that? Mm -hmm. So they actually want somebody to talk to you and tell them, okay, acknowledge the fact, okay, it's normal to have those mood changes, to right. have those different kind of behaviors. But then it's uh, good to understand that how you have different strategies that you can use in your day-to-day -day life to manage those emotions. Mm -hmm. And in terms of managing emotions, and I think we, like for my generation, we grew up in a very sort of, we knew what our boundaries were and we dare not mm -hmm. step out of those boundaries, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And here, uh, for example, the kids are growing up in different cultures, mm -hmm. right? And so their emotions, uh, they're experiencing them differently than we did, than yes. I did. Yes, definitely. Uh, that's the best part, you know, it's because they're being uh, born and brought up in a diverse culture. So that mm -hmm. gives them an opportunity and they're also being sensitive to different people, how their culture uh, circumstances are, what are their cultural boundaries and how to respect that okay. thing. Um, we have a caller, so we're going to take their call. So please go ahead. You don't need to identify yourself, but you can ask your question. Hi, Edina. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to congratulate you all for putting up such a wonderful show. So my Thank question you. is regarding uh, little kids like around 12 to 13 pre-teenage and uh, early teenage and their screen timings and their addiction to devices so how can we handle that okay thank you for that question so i'm gonna ask uh, uh akanksha the question is about mm. teenagers and how they get addicted to their devices mm -hmm. what can parents do to especially during this time mm -hmm. COVID-19 right mm -hmm. uh, when they're always sort of on some sort of device if it's not their phone it might be a laptop or a tablet or tv yeah. what can parents do to get their kids off of uh, these devices uh, so for that i think it's very important for parents to develop a priority list or a task list for what they want their kid to accomplish or what the task the kids have there in mind to do on a certain day. Mm -hmm. And then try to cover at least two tasks before noon, uh, if we start our day, and then give them an hour of any device time, you know. They, if they want to watch a TV show or watch a video game with their friends, because I know that kids these days, they uh, are on phones with their friends while watching video games. So, you know, if they have that time set up with their friends, but just try to limit that time to two hours a day. Mm -hmm. Like one before two, before afternoon, and then one hour in the evening. And right. try to include other substitutes. So if you're asking your kid to l spend less time on these devices, so what are the other substitutes that they are, you are providing them to spend their time, right? which they like? Mm -hmm. and, and I think the earlier we talked about those strengths um, that our kids have, right? So yes. providing them with arts and crafts and encouraging them to use, um, you know, I often say to my kids, um, uh, go to the recycling bin, mm -hmm. right? And uh, take out things that you can uh, use from there, yeah, that's right? Good to build something so and and I think it also depends on the child's personality some mm -hmm. kids will just go and grab things and start making things yeah. wh whereas others are uh, a little bit different so learning about your child's strengths yes. as you mentioned is mm -hmm. really important yes. so uh, we, we would like um, to get more calls here from more people our number is 647-981-5892 uh, feel free to give us a call so we can talk about um, or give you some suggestions and some ideas. So um, what are some of the things that kids can do at home? 
like uh, our caller asked uh, about ideas mm -hmm. and I talked about some of the craft. What else can they do? What are some of the suggestions that you may have? Uh, I think uh, we can also incorporate uh, some kind of a physical exercise, physical workout. If you have a backyard, you can do just uh, easy workout things, you know, that their parents can also accompany or practice yoga that does not need that much of space. Mm -hmm. So because physical and mental fitness, that is one of the important things, including meditation mm -hmm. in their routine, could also be a part of the thing that you can use to deviate their mind right. and uh, time from spending on video games. Okay, we have another caller, so we're going to take the call. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Rina. Hi. Thank you for hosting such a nice show and sharing such relevant information about the teenagers. Thank you. So I just heard that you were talking about cyberbullying. Can you mm -hmm. explain what is that and how to know if a child is a part of that or he or she is being bullied online? Sure. Thank you for your question. So cyberbullying is what our question is about. So uh, Akanksha, the caller asked about cyberbullying. First of all, what is it? Mm -hmm. And um, if you can define cyberbullying. And then secondly, if you know that your child is being bullied, what can a parent do or what can a, a student do? Okay, so if we talk about bullying, uh, cyberbullying, it's mostly a form of a bullying in terms of uh, having inappropriate text messages or bullying in terms of on internet, that is using the help of a virtual platform to bully the other person. So right. the person who's bullying mm -hmm. is kind of behind the screen and uh, the identification is not uh, valid. You don't know a person can have a, a forged username and then send a text message or send uh, pictures or inappropriate videos and that kind of have a deep uh, impact on person's mental health. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, in terms of uh, being parents aware that if their child is being cyberbullied, it's, uh, you know, keeping a check on their behavior, that if they're showing any kind of distress, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, confining themselves in their own personal space, not keeping their phone on a dining table or, you know, they're always worried that if something blink on my phone, my parents would see and it would not be appropriate thing. Right. What can the youth do? So, for example, let's say they, um, uh, you know, become uh, the victims of cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. um, what can they do? Who can they reach out? Uh, so there is a special unit of police that uh, address the cyberbullying issues. You can go to their website and in uh, other than that, you can also go to the regional police station that is in your neighborhood and just write them the complaint, okay, this is the information and these are the safe text messages that you have received from a particular number that you don't know who is the person on the other right. side of the line. Or if they have sent you some videos, just save them and then show it as a proof. And then it depends, now it's their responsibility, it's police responsibility to take, to investigate that thing and reach to the conclusion Whereas if you know that this is the person who is doing, you should also talk to their parents or on a family basis mm -hmm. that uh, we know that their kid is doing this thing, which is kind of having a bad impact on our kids' mental health. Right. So cyberbullying is a serious issue as well. And uh, as Akanksha men mentioned, it can be in the form of texting. It can be in the form of pictures, kids uh, sending pictures or threatening each other online. So it could be on their phone, on in their emails. And there are so many different ways that a child can get bullied online, which is then referred to cyberbullying. And as Akanksha mentioned, depending on the seriousness of cyberbullying, you can either, um, you know, talk about it and, you know, try to see what other ways you can address it, or you can also rep report to the police. Um, so there, I think we have another caller. Um, so can we put a call through? So we can continue talking about um, cyberbullying. Um, so some of the kids may 
um, as you mentioned, they may be scared. They may mm -hmm. not know what to do. Um, they might continue getting bullied. Mm -hmm. What are some of the signs that parents um, might see? Uh, you mentioned a little bit about keeping the phone with them all the time. What about some, are there physical signs that they may experience? Uh, uh, because if we talk about a bullying in general, uh, there could be, you know, physical bullying. And then in that case, we could see, you know, there are physical signs and or any bruises or any kind of a hurt mm -hmm. that uh, is uh, that have mark on their body. But uh, in cyberbullying, mostly it's on a virtual platform. So there would not be any mark or any physical right. uh, symptoms or bruises kind of a thing on a person's body who has been victimized. Could they experience nervousness and yes. anxiety and yes. those sort of signs still? Yes, maybe, you Even know. Uh, and anything uh, that could trigger their that kind of response they could right. uh, have a panic attack they could go uh, into anxiety attack if just listening about this friend or maybe uh -huh. you know if you're planning to go out and visit a family friend they would be thinking in their mind maybe you know their kids are also on the same virtual platform they might have seen that video right. they might have seen that picture what will they think about me mm -hmm. you know that kind of feeling that kind of restless they have every time in their mind that make them very much prone to getting into depression. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have another call, uh, Nilipti? Can we pe put it through? Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. Uh, hi, Rina. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. So my question is about the importance of discipline in the life of kids. How is it important? from small kids to uh, teenagers and other. How is the discipline important and how should we keep it? Okay, thank you for that question. So, Akanksha, the question is about discipline. Okay. Um, in terms of from all the different age groups, mm -hmm. how is it important or why is it important to have a discipline? Uh, it's it's a form of life, I would say, you know, like you make a routine for your day. Sometimes it's okay to go with the flow, but mostly you try to have a plan that you follow. It kind of makes you less prone to failure. Mm -hmm. If you have a disciplined life, you are in check of things that you can control. There right. are so many things in life that we can't control, but still there are so things that we can take charge of and like getting up on time. Mm -hmm. so that we have more hours in a day to spend in a productive way to complete all our chores that we have lined up during the day. Right. So that kind of a discipline that helps us to be a better person, better form of the existing person we are. Mm -hmm. it's, there's always chance of improvement that we see in ourselves. Even as a grown-up, we see, okay, this, this is the thing that I did not went well this week because there were a few things lacking in my own behavior. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I was uh, more reluctant about making dinner, so I preferred to have a takeout kind of a meal. That's why my health got suffered. Right. So that's why my eating discipline routine was disturbed. So that's how you need to make changes and uh, it will help you to have a better physical and mental personality. Right. And, you know, as you mentioned, uh, discipline helps us. It's a way of life, right? Mm -hmm. And when we look at our ourselves or our grandparents, they mm -hmm. had a great routine. They had a great discipline. Um, you know, if I, even today, when, when I visit uh, back home, visit India, people wake up, like they're, they're up <laughs> by five o'clock, yeah. right? They're getting their chores done. And then in the afternoon, they have free time, they can rest. So that's a form of discipline, right? Yes. So they're getting uh, their most important things done before the heat hits. So, it, you know, the examples are all around us. If we look at even our, our grandparents' lives or, uh, you know, a farmer, I often think, you know, they yes. have a huge, uh, you know, fields to take mm -hmm. care of. And they ha if they don't have discipline, they won't be able to harvest their crop, yes. right? Yes. So <laughs> it's the same thing in our lives. Um, we are sowing the seeds in our life, right? Yes. So whatever we sow is what, what we're going to reap, right? Yeah, so definitely. Uh, discipline is, uh, gives us that uh, in our life. So um, uh, Akanksha, as we're coming towards the end of the program, what um, uh, would you say, what are the, some of the key messages that our youth uh, should keep in mind? 
Uh, I would like to say that uh, they should never restrict themselves, that it is not the right time to seek for self help or what other people would think if they come out and uh, ask for help. They should and should always talk to their parents first or whatever safe place they have. It could be in their household, could be their relatives, could be their friends or, you know, just reaching out at us and we would try to provide them the best uh, services that we can do in our capacity. And uh, that's the important thing because we don't want to lose anybody to anything that they cannot handle. Kanksha, can you quickly give uh, your phone number as we're reaching, the, we're almost at the end of the program? Yes, you can always contact us at 905-677-0889. And my name is Akanksha. You can always leave a voicemail on the number provided and I will get back to you uh, after listening to your voicemail. But it's very important that when you call, leave a voicemail if the phone is not answered. So at least we have your name and phone number to reach back to you. Kangsha, thank you so much for that. Thank I you really so much, appreciate Nina. it. It was great having you <laughs> and uh, talking about our youth and better families program here yeah. at PCHS. And I'm just going to repeat that number again, 905-677-0889. Um, if you're reaching out for help, if you're looking for some sort of support, either for yourself as a youth or the parents can also call and ask uh, for support. I would like to thank our callers who called in today, and uh, we would like to continue hearing from you and being engaged in this program. And um, we look forward to many programs at uh, this platform, Intergen. As I always say, it is a safe space for the youth of yesterday, today, and tomorrow to hear and to be heard. We thank you for joining us, and we look very much forward to our next show. Thank you, and have a wonderful evening.